Perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, if you are in the Midwest region, uh, then you probably had snow last night like we did in Ohio. Uh, but uh, I want to welcome you to a webinar, the webinar training today on meeting your small business professional. Hopefully you are joining us because you have an interest in doing business with the federal government. And uh, my name is Jill Nagy Reynolds, and I'm with the SBA Columbus District Office. Uh, my colleague Shonda Harris is also with the Columbus District Office, and then Vernice Mathis is with the Indiana District Office, if you can wave, Vernice, so we can see you. But uh, uh, we are very pleased to offer this training in partnership with our Apex Accelerators. Uh, today, we are joined by uh, the uh, Ohio University Program Manager, Sharon Hopkins, with the uh, Apex Accelerator, and Jordan Lucas, who is with the uh, South Point uh, Apex Accelerator. So we are your moderators and your uh, support team today. Uh, so uh, we will begin the webinar training with introducing Apex Accelerators. And then uh, after that, uh, Shonda Harris will be moderating and you will meet your pan our panelists for today. Uh, we are very excited to have a uh, broad array of federal agencies joining us today, in addition uh, to uh, Crawley, a uh, prime contractor that does business across uh, the United States, around the world. Uh, so uh, John will be talking about how to uh, uh, find subcontracting opportunities or how to get started with Crawley. Uh, this will be a moderated panel, uh, but we will take questions from uh, the audience after we have, or Shonda, you can decide how you want to do it, but uh, uh, Shonda will be asking questions of the panelists, and then afterwards, uh, we will take questions from the audience. If you could please put your questions into the chat, and I will be monitoring the chat. Uh, so it's good to see you too, Sandra. And without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Jordan Lucas uh, from Apex Accelerators, at, uh, at South Point. Thank you so much, Jill. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jordan Lucas. As Jill said, I am the director of the Southern Ohio Apex Accelerator. Uh, some of you may have heard of a PTAC, which was called a Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Uh, we are now called Apex Accelerator. So we've had a change in name, but all of our services that we provide to the small business community have stayed the same. Our whole purpose is to help small businesses break into uh, government contracting, whether that be state, local, or at the federal level. Um, our services are free of charge. We do one-on-one -on -one counseling with uh, small businesses. We have workshops, we have events like this that we reach out and try to help our small business community um, get the skills they need to market themselves better to federal agencies. Um, and we actually have over 96 centers throughout the United States. In Ohio alone, we have about 11 or 12, depending on how you look at it, but we have centers that serve your area and can help you from the very beginnings through the whole process of looking at solicitations, uh, bidding on solicitations, marketing your business properly to the correct agencies. Um, that's our whole mission is to really try to help you find out if it is the right fit for you to do um, work with the federal government if you're in a position to do that. Um, and if you're not, we can have uh, one of our resource partners help you get to the place to actually be able to sell to federal government or state or local governments. Um, so um, we're a, a, a great resource for small business community. Um, I will put the website uh, to our organization in the chat, and you can check to find what your local uh, Apex Accelerator office contact information is, since I know we have a lot of people from uh, different places here today. But we'd love for you to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you. Um, again, our services are free of charge, um, and we can really try to help bolster uh, your business with the federal government. So um, I guess now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Shonda Harris, I believe. Yes, thank you so much, Jordan. And welcome, everyone. It's always exciting 
um, when we can put on webinars to assist you as small businesses on your government contracting journey. And we are excited today. Uh, we always look forward to partnering with our Apex Accelerator partners. But today, we are able to also partner with some agencies and a prime contractor. So we are going to, to kick things off. Um, as Jill said, we're going to have a moderated panel discussion. But before that, we're going to allow all of our panelists to introduce themselves. So one of our panelists today is NASA Glenn up in the Cleveland area. And so Miss Eunice, I don't see you. I'm here. <laughs> so Eunice, Eunice is gonna kick us off and we're gonna have an introduction of NASA first, and then we will continue with the um, other agencies. Um, so Eunice, you can take it away. Good morning, everyone. It is certainly my pleasure to provide information about the NASA Glenn Research Center. So Shonda, let me know if you can see my screen. I think I yes. kicked myself out of presentation mode. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So um, anyway, it is my pleasure to give you um, some information about the NASA Glenn Research Center. I'm going to, I have quite a few slides. I'm gonna go through them fairly quickly um, so that you can, but I have the information here so that you can um, be able to refer back to it. So I'm not gonna take too long to go through these slides. So the, um, the NASA Glenn Research Center's mission is to drive research technology and systems to advance aviation, expand the human presence across the solar system, and to enable exploration of the universe and improve life on Earth. Our strategic goals are um, to expand human knowledge through new scientific discoveries, extend human presence to the surface of moon and onto Mars for a sustainable long-term exploration, development and utilization, catalyze economic growth and drive innovation to address national challenges and to enhance the capabilities and operations to catalyze um, current and future mission, mission success. So each center, NASA is part, NASA Glenn Research Center is one of 10 centers across the country. Each center has its own core competencies. So for our, for Glenn Research Center, our core competencies are aircraft propulsion, in-space propulsion and cryogenics, power energy storage conversion, materials, and structures for extreme environments, communications technology, physical sciences, and biomedical technology. And you can find out all this information, more uh, in-depth information on NASA Glenn's uh, website. So uh, our campus, our main campus is located adjacent to the Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Lewis Field has about 342 acres and we have over 3000 employees, both civil servants and contractors. Our other facility that we support is the Neil A. Armstrong Test Facility, which is 50 miles west in Sandusky. If you're familiar with Cedar Point, you'll know where we are. We're right down the street from Cedar Point. We are sit on a lot more land there because we do a lot of testing, loud testing. We don't want to disturb our neighbors. So we sit on 6,400 6, acres of land, and there's just over 100 civil servants and uh, contractors at that facility. So the facility has um, world class, it's world class test facilities um, at the Neil A. Armstrong facility. So we have va a vacuum chamber, a mechanical vibrations facility, reverberant acoustic test facility, our, our Glenn Research Environment, um, Extreme Environment Rig, um, the Zero Gravity Research, and um, the Slope Facility, which is the simulated lunar operations facility. Um, in our vacuum chamber, just a, a quick um, fact about that, the vacuum chamber that we have at that facility was actually built before like a lot of computers, slide rules. It was born in, uh, built in the 1960s. It's still operational today. Um, a lot of, we have a lot of testing, uh, engine testing um, at that facility. It simulates um, grab, uh, zero gravity at this facility. So uh, most of the um, 
the, the, the parts that are going to be on the space launch system will be tested at our, at our, uh, in our facility. So uh, some information about the Office of Small Business Programs. The mission of our program is to integrate small businesses into the industrial base of contractors and subcontractors that support the future of space exploration, such scientific discovery, and aeronautics research. The way that we do that, we understand that small businesses are very key to the um, to the American economy. So the way we uh, do um, uh, participate and help businesses is by, con by participating in outreach events such as these. Uh, we influence small influence small business policy and procedures. We work with the executive and legislative branches of the government. We administer the small business awards. Uh, we have we provide training in any changes um, in small business issues and policies to our acquisition personnel, among other things. The one thing I do want to note is NASA has its own mentor protege program which is separate from the Small Business Administration. And if you want to find out more information about the Small Business, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, the NASA Mentor Protege Program, you can find out more information on at our website. So the way where you find opportunities to do business with NASA, and there's many ways to do that. So of course, SAM.gov, what we actually do is we post we have dollar thresholds where we actually post our um, requirements and anything over $25,000 is posted on SAM.gov. So I encourage you, if you're not registered already on SAM.gov, to get registered and put in your information, your NAICS code parameters, so that you can get um, uh, notifications on it, and this is across the federal government, so you can get notifications on procurements that are, are active and, um, and available. We actually have our own um, acquisition forecast. Our acquisition forecast, and I'll go uh, have a little bit of information on that a little further in my slides. We have Inspires, which is our techn technology um, website, uh, SBIR, STTR. We participate in this program. We have an active contract list, a NASA vendor database, and of course, I mentioned our NASA, our Minute Protege program. So the, the acquisition forecast is updated twice a year, usually in the spring and the fall of each year. This year, um, it should be updated if um, uh, on the website. If you can go to the website, you will see each of the centers have a call that they are required to go out and see what is coming up in the next six months. And so we update it every six months. Some, some of the acquisitions that you'll see there may stay the same. Some will drop off depending on the funding that we get um, from the government, but um, check out the, that forecast. If you're interested in a particular um, contract or requirement, you can actually go on our freedom, the Freedom of Information Act our FOIA website is available at each of the centers and you can obtain documents um, uh, for a particular requirement. And the thing, one thing that is new now is that if you have, if someone has requested a document or um, a contract or contract information, it's now going to be housed on that website. So you will not incur any type of fee or anything to look at the information. So we also have our active contract listings. Now, our active contract listings are, um, are in eight areas where we actually have recurring buys. Make sure to, to check these um, contract listings out because the procurement, uh, the area of procurement has changed quite a bit within the federal government and especially at NASA. So we actually have um, requirements that have actually been consolidated or bundled. And so you would have to make sure to check, make sure to make sure because the um, SAM is your is your um, overarching tool that you're going to use. Some of the some of the requirements may have been um, com, um, consolidated. But the way that you would use this tool is you look at your ultimate contract end date and uh, you go 
back up 18 to 24 months because the federal government, we actually start in within NASA, we actually start looking at our requirements way before the contract is getting ready to end. So if you want to find out more information about that, I would encourage you to um, get in touch with your, uh, um, with me as a small business specialist or any of your small business specialists regarding um, a requirement that you may be interested in. So we're so excited that um, NASA has a NASA Office of Small Business Programs has a NASA vendor database. I believe this up here because um, if you scan this QR code, I encourage you to register your business. If you're interested in doing business with the Office of Small Business, well, I'm sorry, with NASA, because what happens is there are business, other businesses on this database that are that are also interested in doing business with the um, with NASA. And as I explained, the world of procurement is changing a lot. So if there's a um, it may be a vendor or contractor that you might be interested in teaming with or as you um, go through your business development um, work, I would encourage you to to actually use the vendor database as a tool to locate uh, prospective team members or subcontractors. So this is just information about how to use the database. Um, the database, um, if you have already registered on a database, you have to re-register. Um, our former database, the database that we had before have been um, uh, taken out of commission because of some security reasons that were going, uh, things that were going on with that database. We um, use Google Docs and Google Docs was a very difficult platform to use. And now we have really have a great database to use where you can do um, your searches uh, for um, looking for businesses or for your acquisition planning. And on this database, we actually push out um, at uh, Mark, I'm sorry, um, outreach events or it, our uh, trainings that are actually going on. Um, within NASA, so I encourage you to um, register on the database. Another way that we stay in contact with uh, small businesses is through our mo mobile app. Our mobile app is available on iOS and Android platforms. On this platform, this is how you have the um, applications and things that are going on with the, uh, with the Office of Small Business Programs and Procurement and NASA at your fingertips. I always tell people, I was like, you know what, if you pick up my phone, I actually counted them. I have like a hundred and something apps. And the reason why we put apps on our phone is to, to have fingertip accessibility to information. And so that is Office of Small Business Programs has made it easier for small businesses to have access to critical information. Our active contract listings are there. Our um, goal information is there that's updated monthly. And there's other information that's available that if you're interested in uh, doing business with NASA that you'll find on the app. We have a learning series, which is totally awesome. Um, the learning series is on Wednesday, every Wednesday, I'm sorry, not every Wednesday, every, the third Wednesday of every month at 1 p.m. And we have a number of different topics that we um, have available on that learning series. If you're unable to come on at one o'clock, the, the learning series are recorded and the presentations are made available that you can go back and look at it. But some of the examples that we've had were um, how to do business with the, with the different centers. So one of them was the Space Center. Um, I've done presentations on uh, Glenn Research Center, um, taking uh, advantage of small business resources, in the SBIR, STGR program. And the one thing that I'd like to bring to your attention is that we have a really great town hall that usually could, occurs in June of this of the year where you can speak with the associate administrator. Unfortunately, Mr. Delgado will be retiring at the end of this year, but we still will have these um, this information available for you. Our outreach events are virtual right now. So we'll have an upcoming event and just go to the website to check and see what we have available in our learnings. next learning series is November the 15th, which we are talking about Native American business development programs. And on December the 13th, we have programs and resources to help you do business with the federal government. So 
Office of Small Business Programs is also active on social media. So follow us, click on follow us, follow us on um, Facebook and Twitter, now X, and then on the on LinkedIn, go into, if you look, go on LinkedIn, Land Research Center is actually active on um, LinkedIn. So you can find out information about um, of events on there. So the way you make a connection with me is through capability briefings, joint counseling sessions with our available providers or active contractors on our center, outreach events, and go on to the Office of Doing Business with um, Glenn Research Center. We have a small business advisory council where the members are active and interested in doing business with small businesses. And then um, our active contract, I'm sorry, not active contract listing, but the contract listing, the contractors that are currently active at Glenn Re Research Center are on, on the website identified here. This is a, just a, a slide of all of the small business folk, uh, specialists that are available for, for information all over the country. And so I would encourage you to reach out to them. This information is also available on the mobile app. To learn more about Glenn Research Center, we have virtual tours and guided virtual tours. And we are active on Facebook, Instagram, um, X, Flickr, um, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Uh, YouTube. To, so to learn more again about NASA, NASA uh, Office of Small Business Programs, please click on the link and, and explore our website. My information is available to you on this slide. So whenever you're ready to call me, give me a call and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, uh, Eunice. Uh, representing NASA. Um, some of you I noticed we have a few more people that just joined. So as we are starting, um, before we actually do a moderated panel discussion, we're allowing all of the agencies to give a brief overview, about a 10 minute overview about who they are and uh, what they do. So I know some of you, the next question, are the slides gonna be available? Can we get the slides? Yes. Um, it is being recorded, as you can see in the chat. Um, Sharon Hopkins from OU Apex has put in the, the link where you'll be able to get it. It takes about a week to finalize the recording. So give us about a week, probably like next Wednesday. The recording will be uploaded as well as all of the slides. We'll have all of them comprised into one PDF so that you can have access to it. So now we are getting ready to our next presenter. Um, and let me pull up the slides and let me put this in presentation mode. All right, our next presenter is Crowley, who's a prime contractor. It's presented by Mr. John Mowad. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, yes, John Mowad, actually. Mowad, thank you. And if you want to, Tell me when to, to go ahead and forward. I can okay. do that. And, and just so you know, I, it's not allowing me to put my video on, so I don't know if that's okay or not. But it, um, it's okay. Okay. So uh, good. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is John Mowat. I'm with Crowley Solutions. Um, and uh, just uh, you know, Eunice is a tough act to follow. That was a great presentation, Eunice. Um, so um, I. I Crowley is actually a uh, is a 131 year old privately owned company based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, we we are one of the largest U.S. based transportation companies. Um, as you can see here, we have over 6,000 employees, and we have um, five major business units that we work in. Um, I'm in solutions, which is where our government contracts lie. Um, we also have a logistics arm. Um, which handles all of our land transportation throughout domestic United States. And we have um, shipping, which is our, um, you know, our, our, our port operations and our shipping operations, uh, where we have uh, fleets of ships that, uh, that, that go through the Atlantic for the most part, um, down to the Caribbean, where we have, uh, you know, vessels that run back and forth to Puerto Rico, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands and other areas. Um, our Crowley Fuels Division, based out of Alaska, 
Um, it, it's not out of the ordinary for you to see uh, a Crowley gas station or tanker trucks while you're up there. Um, and our wind energy, which is new, where we're, you're seeing some offshore wind farms um, uh, opening up um, around the coasts throughout the country. Uh, next slide, please. There you go. Okay, so um, as as I've mentioned, I work in the uh, on the solution side for our government contracts. I am the uh, director of the program management office that oversees our domestic and international contracts. Um, domestically, Crowley has uh, one of the largest or the largest uh, U.S. transcom transportation contracts um, that is out there um, called DFTS. Um, through DFTS, we have goals to have um, at least 28% of small business utilization, and we exceed that contract. We exceed that goal um, month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. We have a very large small business participation. Um, uh, we also are a major uh, prime contractor. Uh, aside from U.S. Transcom, we do a lot of work with FEMA, GSA, DLA, um, and, and many other. Uh, many other agencies where we do um, transportation. We are uh, we, we provide all services from full truckload LTL, um, specialized open deck lo uh, shipments um, to logistics such as warehousing, um, et cetera. Um, and we are, are key to humanitarian relief or, or, or disaster relief and humanitarian aid. Um, we, we are heavily involved with FEMA. From an expeditionary or international role, uh, we have a global footprint um, working um, not only with the, um, you know, uh, DLA or other agencies, but we are uh, active at the ports and moving things. We have um, contracts that, uh, that go through Europe, and we are a part of the African Logistics Network. Our liner services, as I mentioned earlier, um, are, you know, are, are go from on the East Coast primarily, but we do have business partners in the Pacific. Um, we also have many maritime contracts with the U.S. government. Next slide, please. So uh, this slide is really directed towards primarily transportation companies. So if, if you are, uh, if you're looking for business opportunities where you can um, uh, align with Crowley um, and, and be part of our distribution network, um, our transportation network, um, for asset-based carriers, we encourage you to, that, that's a link right there where it says Apex Accelerator Referral Form. Um, that is a link that you can click on once the slides get sent out. You submit the form and it goes to our capacity or procurement team. And they will, um, they will review and once approved, they will send you an invite and to, to take the process for onboarding. Um, this is, you know, this is something we use for all of our transportation contracts. Um, so, uh, there, like I said, there's small business set asides for others. Um, unfortunately, right now we are not onboarding any brokers. That doesn't mean brokers cannot reach out to us. It's certainly good for you to get in the pipeline. However, um, we are focused on asset-based carriers and trying to grow our, our relationships with asset-based carriers. Um, if you are looking for other business development opportunities, um, so as a prime contractor, like I said, we have many small business um, set aside or small business um, goals within our prime contracts. Um, so you're welcome to reach out to me for other things outside of transportation that you may want to look into. Um, in addition, if you are a small business that is looking to be a prime contractor on a small business set aside, and Crowley fits some of your gaps, um, I encourage you to email me and I can get you in the right direction with our business development team so that um, I would so that we can see if a partnership is good um, where you are the prime contractor, Crowley is your sub as support. Um, if that is the opportunity you're looking for, I would encourage you to come to us with a capabilities matrix or a gaps matrix where we can see where Crowley can fill in the gaps that your company cannot um, cannot do. So um, with that said, uh, I, I know that was a lot of information in a short period of time, but I'm looking forward to the panel discussion and uh, looking forward to questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, John.
And we, one of the um, beautiful things in working with Crowley, as John mentioned, they are a prime contractor. So we don't want to assume everybody um, has been doing government contracting. If you're new, um, a prime contractor is a company that has a direct contract, a direct award with a government agency. So as you are doing business with the government, sometimes it may be hard for you to break into um, the federal government market as a prime and to get your first contract with an agency. So sometimes uh, being a subcontractor to a prime contractor is a great way for you to make entrance into the federal government market. So I'm sorry about that. I had to stop because I couldn't forward the slide. So thank you, John, for that. And our next presenter. Um, there we are. We have Miss Ariel Douglas from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the acronym HHS. Yes, well, I love that bright red. <laughs> yes. All right, I, and you know um, you know, we match. We didn't even we didn't even plan that. Yes, good away. morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ariel Douglas, uh, and I serve as the Deputy Director for the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization um, at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm definitely excited to have the opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, I guess this, I would say this is my first webinar session um, with the Apex Accelerator, this FY, so kudos um, to you all for grabbing me up. Um, next slide. All right, um, so to keep it very simple, um, I'm sure many of you all have had some type of interaction or your family members have had interactions with some part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I mean, overall, um, the agency is focusing on the well-being for um, the American people. You know, I always put it from birth all the way up to you know, our death and anything and everything in between as it relates to mental health, food and drugs. All of that stuff is included within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, so again, we have several operating divisions um, and staff divisions. Um, we consider these to be our program offices, you know, some of the, I guess, known ones are the National Institutes of Health, um, NIH, um, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS, the Food and Drug Administration, also known as FDA, and the Centers for Drug Control and Prevention in CDC. Um, within our operating divisions, there are 13 um, contracting activities. Um, they're all buying different things um, in support of many of our operating divisions and our staff divisions. Um, the agency kind of ha has an average budget of about $40 billion, um, and usually the contract spend is about $9 billion um, each fiscal year. Um, and in 23, we actually exceeded $9 billion and came in at about $10.2 billion that were awarded um, prime contract awards to small businesses. So that definitely is a big number. So there is a lot of work here. Um, if you all are interested in doing business with HHS, um, on the right hand of the slide is just a kind of highlight of some of the things that we do buy. Now it's not limited to this, but these were some of our top um, areas of spin in FY23. Um, the pharmaceutical preparation and manufacturing really falls within um, kind of our vaccines um, and stuff like that. Um, computer design services, very you know, IT related projects. Um, we do a lot of professional services as well within our operating division and some research and development. Next slide. All right, so just wanted to kind of give you all some tips for success um, in doing business with HHS. Um, of course, if you're interested in doing work with the federal government, um, it is required that your company is registered in the system for award management and that you have your unique entity identifier. Um, included as a part of that profile. We definitely always encourage you to visit your local Apex Accelerator here on the line now. Um, if you have an interest in doing business, I mean, they offer, offer many free services to assist you in successfully pursuing procurement opportunities with federal agencies. Um, also consider visiting your local minority business development agency business center. Um, a lot of these, they have a lot of services, somewhat kind of similar to the Apex Accelerator to make sure that minority owned businesses are successful within either the government and or commercial space. 
if you have a specific interest in doing business with HHS, um, I would make sure that you fully understand kind of the various mission areas within HHS. Um, all of our operating divisions have their own missions, they have their own budgets, and you know, kind of determine where your company's capabilities would fall would be best. Um, typically, I recommend businesses that have an interest in doing business with HHS that they kind of consider pursuing two to three of the operating divisions as a start, um, because there's no, no, you know, you don't get a prize to pursue them all, but, you know, don't want you to be spending your wills and making sure that you're actually pursuing things that will be valuable to your company. Um, within our Ozdaboo office, we do have our small business customer experience system. Um, within this system is our one-stop shop for all things relevant to small business. So we do have a small business directory um, in this system where we recommend businesses that have an interest in doing business with us to complete a profile. Um, you have the ability to upload a capability statement. Um, our program officials, as well as our contracting officials, have the ability to conduct searches to locate capable small businesses within this system. So again, if you have interest in HHS, your first stop should be registering your company within our SBCX system. Also within our SBCX system, our procurement forecast is housed. Um, and these are procurements that are forecasted um, beginning in FY24 um, up until FY26. Um, it was just published in the last week of August. Um, and we have over about 3,200 procurements that are identified and forecasted for FY24 and beyond um, that you all can kind of do research in, a research to determine if some of those procurements are things that you, your company would be interested in pursuing. Again, I mentioned that there are a lot of areas in which the department purchases. We purchase IT, we purchase professional services. There's a whole lot of things being purchased, so and a lot of money being spent. So again, becoming how familiar, coming familiar with some of those, um, how we procure and how and which agent and what optive um, procure what is very important. Again, I did mention identifying potential contracting opportunities using our small business customer experience. Um, like I said, it's over 3,000 procurements that have been identified, and you have the ability to conduct searches by NAICS code, by keyword, and be able to export your results into an Excel spreadsheet. Each of the operating divisions have an assigned small business specialist. Um, currently, I'm responsible for nine small business specialists. Um, and again, if you have an interest in a particular operating division, I would recommend you um, reaching out to one of our small business specialists that are assigned to that particular optive. Um, each month on the second Tuesday, we do host vendor engagement sessions, um, which are 15-minute um, um, sessions with our small business specialists that you can sign up for um, in order to, you know, present your capabilities and kind of have conversations about what potentially will be going on in their respective optive. So I always go with the three Ps. Um, so, you know, make sure um, if you're pursuing opportunities here within the Department of Health and Human Services, make sure you are making a good impression. Um, you're coming prepared. You know, if you have questions, making sure that you are formulating your questions based upon something that you have researched. You know, it's nothing like, you know, a small business coming to us saying, hey, I want to do business and then, you know, saying, expecting us to basically drive you down the road. Yes, we are here to serve as your advocate. Um, and assist you on being successful here with the agency, but sometimes you have to come prepared with some information so that we're able to, assist, to be able to assist you. Um, you know, being professional, you know, sending emails are great, but again, having that homework done prior to sending the emails is very important to make sure that you're, you can get a response that is something that's going to be of value to your company. And then be persistent for success, you know. We often hear that, you know, I'm sending emails to contracting officers, I'm sending emails to program officials, and I'm not getting any dead space. I'm getting dead space, I'm not getting any response. So again, you have to be persistent. Um, you know, pursuing federal contracts is not like a microwave meal. You know, it's definitely something that I consider like a slow cooker, you know, and you know, what you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it. And sometimes you're you are gonna get no's, but then you know, along the way you are finally gonna get a yes. So definitely make sure that you are persistent for success. Next slide. All right, just wanted to give you some con contact information. Um, again, I have a link here to our small business customer experience where you can um, complete your small business profile as well as locate our procurement forecast. 
um, wanted to highlight our HHS equity plan um, that called out some actions as it related to the department as it relates to increasing opportunities for underrepresented um, populations. Um, our FY 2024 budget in brief is a document that presents um, kind of some of the areas within the agency that receive funding for new programs um, for this fiscal year and the sustainment of old programs. So you can follow the money here and see what things did get funded for FY24. Again, wanted to include information about our strategic plan um, from 22 through 26. Definitely some information on kind of some of the priority areas that the agency, the department is taking for the next four years. And then I wanted to provide also a direct link to our procurement forecast that you can find um, via our small business customer experience system. And that's all for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ariel. Um, we always love doing these because we don't just put these on so that you can learn as small businesses, but we as um, government uh, professionals, um, Jill, myself, and um, Bernice in Indiana, but also Apex counselors, we're learning also. I wasn't aware that um, HHS kind of touched every kind of facet of human life from cradle to grave. And then their spin, 10.2 million. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, a couple of things I do want to mention because I know we have a variety of small businesses uh, different ages and stages. So if you're wondering, hey, system for award management, Sam, how do I get registered? I don't know anything about that. Getting a UEI, you're in the right place. Our Apex counselors can assist you with that. So if you're new to government contracting, no worries. You can get connected to an Apex counselor. They can get you connected, get you registered, and Sam, get you um, a UEI. Also, Ariel mentioned another resource partner the Minority Business Development Centers here in Ohio, we do have uh, their MBAX, Minority Business Assistance Center. So they're another great resource we do partner with, another great resource that can assist you in your government contracting journey, or um, if you're just doing business in general. Um, and um, Ariel, I'm going to ask before I forget, you mentioned about the vendor engagement sessions. Um, before we send out the slides, could you add that to your presentation, um, yes. some information and a link about that? I think that would be great for our small businesses. You said yes. those are hosted every month? Yeah, so actually, if you, the QR code that's on this slide, um, this contact information slide, um, actually will take you to our main Ozdebu website. Um, and if you go and look for register for events, um, you'll, it will have all of the dates for all of our vendor engagement sessions, the monthly vendor engagement sessions that we have. Um, and they usually the registration opens up about two weeks in advance. Um, and we do limit the spaces to about 45 businesses. So um, I definitely could put the- um, Put that information in, in, the slide. in the chat. Yeah, I could put it in, I could put it in the slide and in the chat um, okay. so that you all can get access. Um, the one for um, November, it is closed. Um, we're having it on the 14th. Um, but we will hold one. Um, the next one actually will be in January um, because our December one, we're actually having one specifically for our large prime contractors to meet small businesses. So if there are small businesses that are looking for subcontracting opportunities with large primes, they will have the opportunity to have um, those 15 minute sessions with them as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. So You're welcome. A lot of opportunities for both prime opportunities, prime contracts and subcontracts, we love that. So next, sometimes forwarding these slides. There we go. Thanks again, Ariel. Next, we will have Naval Surface Warfare Center, the Crane Division, which I believe is in Indiana. So Division of the Navy and presented by Ms. Teresa Brow. Good morning. Good morning, Teresa. I'm Teresa Bruff, and I um, am new to this position. I've actually been in contracts for um, 34 years, but I am acting in a, a acting role currently for the deputy for small business position here at Crane. So next, this is just an overview slide. It got a little messed up, I think, on um, transition, but uh, if we could just move to the next slide, that would be great. 
My presentation will be a little different. I will say that I, I will just um, foot stomp everything everyone else has said as far as tips and tricks for how to work with the government, things that are important to us. I'm going to go through a little bit more about what Crane does. Um, and then uh, during the question and answer session, uh, probably be able to provide a little more information on specifics on how to do business with us. But uh, Crane is a field procurement office under NAVC, um, head of the contracting activity. We have unlimited procurement authority and we have three pillars of um, technical mission areas. We have um, expeditionary warfare, electronic warfare, and then strategic missions. In FY23, we obligated in excess of $2.2 billion across supply services, R&D and construction and prototyping. And we do um, far based contracts, both SAP and large contracts, um, other transactions. So we have really started utilizing the um, other transaction agreement um, authorities that are given to us. We also have been doing prize challenges and we've started um, taking on construction work because NAPVAC hasn't um, had the, the capacity. So when you look at our business opportunities that come out, they are going to have just a wide variety of types of contracting and procurements that, that we do. Next slide, please. So this next slide just gives you an idea of how our workload is broken out by dollars. Um, the reason that the services portion is so significant is because we support the PEO, um, the NAPC pro program executive offices as it relates to their um, contractor support services. So their engineering and technical services are all awarded by NSWC Crane. So their requirements will be on our forecasts as well as the NSWC Crane specific requirements. As you'll see here, the OTA slice has also um, increased. If you look at this from last year, that um, number is less than 100 million. So uh, because of the types of work we are involved in that you'll see on the next few slides, um, that, that piece of our pie is increasing and will continue to increase significantly. So understanding as small businesses, which is what those other transactions really try to focus on, how you can be innovative and help the government solve problems really plays into that OT piece of the pie. Next slide, please. These were our goals for last year. Now, OTs do not, do not get included in the Small Business Administration's goals that we have, um, so, but um, all the other contracts that we do um, are included in these. So you'll see that we met all of our goals and um, helped NAVC meet their overall goal that the Small Business Administration set for, for us. Next slide. So this next slide really starts talking about the types of work that we do here at Crane and the types of contracts and support that um, we need assi assistance with. We have about 4,000 uh, employees and um, contractors that support us here at our facility in Southern Indiana, but um, we also buy a lot of hardware. And so the, we, uh, do sensors, communication, mobility, a lot of different types of systems that support that expeditionary warfare. We do less than 20 millimeter um, procurement of weapons and the ammunition for those weapons. We have the authority to do that versus uh, the Army. We also support the electronic warfare area. So we do a lot of uh, control the electronic electromagnetic spectrum um, in order to control the fight. We have the airborne electronic attack system. We do a lot of infrared and laser countermeasures and airborne EW defense. And then within our strategic missions area, this is where we really get into um, a lot of the other transactions area. This supports the Trident missile system and um, we 
have strategic electronics and sensors that we do to help with the global deterrence and ballistic missile defense. Um, within our activity, we also have, you know, our corporate operations, contracts, et cetera. So we do contracts, um, service type contracts for business analytics, administrative support, IT, um, and those types of requirements. And then again, we have those uh, program executive offices for NAVC that we also support. Next slide, please. So a little bit more about what we buy. Um, you know, this just gives you guys a list of some items that we procure. So if you look at, at SAM.gov and see the types of procurements, they're going to be of these types areas, very technical, very uh, sophisticated type equipment that we, we are very involved in, not just with buying the equipment, but also then with that, that right of the life cycle, the sustainment portion. So we're going to do a lot of procurements for sustainment. Um, and we have depot support here. So we do a lot of piece part buys, a lot of breakouts for that. And then because we have depot and repair facilities and tests, we buy a lot of test equipment <clears throat> as well. From a um, mission areas, uh, we are very involved in finding solutions for autonomous systems, uh, defense against those autonomous systems, a lot of cyber. We do the, again, the, uh, you know, the electromagnetic domains and hypersonics and microelectronics. That's the hypersonic and microelectronics area is where you're going to see a huge uh, amount of dollars going into those other transactions. If you've been watching the news, you will have seen information about the CHIPS Act, uh, Crane obligated over um, $900 million of that CHIPS Act uh, dollars in the, in the last year. So that very technical hypersonic microelectronics area where we're looking for solutions to, to you know, get a lot of work out of China and, quite honestly, and back into the United States is where Crane is playing a very big role. So next slide, please. This is just going to give you a list of the NAICS code and PSC codes that we um, are, that are our top 10 that we do our procurement areas in. So that will be in the, the slide deck. And then the next slide just provides my um, contact information. Um, I'm also going to add a slide that provides some information on some events that we do. Um, November 7th, we have an event coming up called what, what we call Connect to Mission. And for the November 7th event, that event um, focuses on our corporate operations and command requirements. Uh, we have an organization called the Crane Regional Defense Group that hosts uh, and conduct and takes care of all the registration, et cetera, for the Connect to Mission events. So I will provide um, some links to that as well. In April, we always have what we call a Buy Indiana event where we invite companies to come and um, actually meet with and, uh, and talk to the different uh, technical requirements people that we have throughout our organization. We hold this event in French Lake, Indiana at the um, beautiful West Baden and French Lake Hotel areas. Um, and that gives, like I said, a lot of opportunity for companies to talk to our requirements personnel and, and also each other to develop those prime and subcontractor relationships. And then we also have a small business website that I will um, provide that gives links to our long range acquisition forecast for Crane. And we utilize um, the Seaport Next Gen contracts for our services. Those are a required contract for us to use for engineering and technical services. And I will provide the link to that as well because we also um, have our acquisition forecast for those um, on, on that website. And with that, I will um, turn it back over. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Teresa. Wasn't aware of all the things that you buy, but it's wonderful that we're able to pull together. One of the things we love doing is to highlight um, agencies where there are a variety of things that they sell. So uh, 
Ukraine not only does supply services, but R&D construction and wasn't aware of all the technology that um, your agency is involved in and about the CHIPS Act and uh, the 900 million that you spent. So that's very interesting. I know we have Intel coming here, but it's always interesting to see what agencies are doing. So thank you so much, Teresa. And if you're able to add those slides and Ariel's able to add those maybe today, I'm gonna commit. <laughs> um, we typically don't do this, but I don't mind because uh, look, it looks like Crane is having an event coming up next week. I will send out the slides to everybody um, so that you'll have the information um, because some of those events are coming up and we want you to have access to them if you're interested. So I would be willing once we have the updated slides to kind of send those out to everybody. Um, and I may have Jill to help remind me because <laughs> we get so busy. <laughs> Um, all right, we're right on target. So we do have one more agency and then we're gonna get started with our panel discussion. So we have, is Miss Sarah Bell with us? I don't know why my slides stick. Good morning, Shonda, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Good morning, Sarah. Wonderful. Good morning. Well, folks, uh, first off, thank you so much for having me. I, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, this is what it's all about. I love being here and, and sharing with folks the best way to get connected here with Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So I, I took a slightly different approach. Um, I'm going to utilize the chat a little bit more, and I'm going to go ahead and start in, um, throw in my contact information and a couple of websites. Shauna, am I able to steal the screen from you and share? <laughs> I, I might try. Um, I was going to hopefully Absolutely. maybe Absolutely. Let me stop sharing, and I'll let okay. you, yes. There you go. Okay, we're we're going to get fancy here. Okay. Um, Good I'm to have a variety. Sure. There we go. Okay. I'm going to see if it'll let me do it here. Okay. It says share. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. It's, there you go. Okay. Awesome. I'm in. Awesome. So I wanted to go ahead and um, tell you guys a little bit about Air Force Research Lab, specifically here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So I'm located in Dayton, Ohio. And um, on this, this website here, airforceresearchlab.com, I'm going to hover over this technology drop down. So we have quite a few technology directorates under AFRL. Um, I, there's more listed here, but I want to say there's about 10. They're kind of always adding a few more. Uh, we've most recently just added the digital capabilities um, directorate. You'll see that at the bottom. So here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, we have about five of these located here. So we have um, RQ, so that's our Aerospace Systems Technology Directorate. We have RX, which is Materials and Manufacturing. We have RY, which is Sensors. And we have, it's RH, but it's our 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing. Uh, it's, it's written Human Performance on this drop down, And that's really, um, so it's Human Performance. I always tell people, think like, cockpit helmets and heart rate, but it's also um, supports our USAF SAM, which is our hospital. And so I, th I think it's important to just um, let folks know that uh, that we we cover them as well. And then down at the bottom um, is our digital, is, I forget, they, they, they've changed the name of, I believe it's Digital Capabilities um, Directorate. That's a new stand up here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And I always kind of jokingly call them our cowboys. There are <laughs> kind of our um, rapid innovation, CRY is, is tucked under there, DARPA, IARPA, um, um, SDPE. So those are all just kind of our rapid prototyping research and developing um, technologies. And they're kind of all um, put under there. And so at Wright Pat, those five are located here. And then just for examples, you know, up in Rome, New York, we have the Information Technology Directorate. Um, over in Kirtland, we have space vehicles and things like that, Kirtland, New Mexico. And so I wanted to share this um, link with you folks and, and let you know about this technology drop down because one of the most important things uh, that I share with industry is is knowing who your customer is. And so I offer, take a look at these drop downs. You can click on all of them. Um, let's just go with materials and manufacturing because that's located here at Wright Pat. Oh, it's not, is it going to pull? There we go. I, I offer, look at these, take a look at the websites and say, hey, 
basically, you know, do these folks buy what I'm selling in layman's terms? You know, it, it, do your capabilities fit the mission of materials and manufacturing technology directorate? I think that's important to know um, so that you're not wasting your time and, and that it's, it's beneficial and you can make those right connections and you can make them sooner. I'm going to go ahead and back out here. So take a look at this website. It's super great. Um, there's a lot here um, in this website. Um, and so, you know, knowing, knowing who buys what you sell is kind of my first takeaway from my presentation. And then how do I connect with AFRL? That's a great question. So um, AFRL recently, I said recently, it's probably a little older than I think, but they stood up a um, Tech Connect website here. And if you'll see, I'm hovering over this light bulb. I actually went ahead and pulled it up. So if you click on that light bulb, it's gonna take you to our Tech Connect site. Our Tech Connect is basically a way for folks to share with the Air Force what they do, what their capabilities are, and we can give um, real, fight, real time feedback. Yes, this is an area we're working on. No, this is not an area we're interested in. Or, hey, I see what you can do. Did you look at this open solicitation? It's out on sam.gov. So, and when I say we, what it is, um, and I believe if I scroll down here, I can kind of show you, walk through it right here. Sharing is easy. Really what you need to give in in terms of information, it's a pretty low barrier to entry, name, email address. The goal is to give um, program managers, program engineers, and subject matter experts that have their information it loaded in the back end of the system, like a two minute read about what you do, um, what your capabilities are, and they can um, provide that feedback. Like I said, yes, we're interested, no, we're interested, or hey, we don't work on this, but say maybe Navy Crane does. Let me throw you over to my buddy over there. They can engage with you within this um, platform or they can email you directly. One of the benefits of engaging with you in the system, um, in, in the, um, I, uh, yeah, platform, platform is probably my best word, is that other folks that have their um, capabilities and things like that loaded in the system, the back end, have access to see those conversations and can join in, you know, maybe they were on the fence or, or didn't quite realize or things like that, but other folks um, can, can join in on that conversation. Um, this is our way, basically, of streamlining how to get con industry connected inside the fence. And so this is really when it's like, hey, how do I work with AFRL? This is where I send folks to go. Um, you can, a couple of things on this, you can enter in as many um, capabilities as if you would like. So it could be a strategy that you throw all your capabilities in, in one share and ideas, or you could submit multiple share and ideas if you really want to highlight some keywords and things like that. Um, it is AI enabled. There's still a human in the loop um, overseeing it, um, but AI on the back end is going to match your capabilities, your keywords with all those SMEs that already um, are engaged. At last check a couple months ago at about the 10,000 um, s and E's here at um, in the in the DAF. So when I say DAF, I mean Department of the Air Force. So that's going to include Air Force as well as Space Force. You'll see that here um, at the top, which is great. So even broader audience. But out of about the 10,000 s and E's here um, in the DAF, uh, 6,000 of them have their keywords, their ideas, their not their their, their um, uh, projects and their CVs and resumes entered into the system. And, and honestly, for, for the Air Force, that's a really high percentage of a response rate. So this site is championed. Um, this site is um, where we say go. Um, and, and kind of in a, a snapshot, this is a way to submit um, unsolicited ideas, if you will, in front of all the um, SMEs and program managers. So Love this site. I really share, um, you know, this is if you contact me, which you're welcome to, you have my email in the chat. Um, but this is where I'm going to say, hey, look here, get some feedback from the Air Force. You know, if they tell you, look, we're just not doing this, you know, or hey, we're working on this, but we've kind of pivoted in this direction. Have you considered that? Um, you know, you can kind of have those dialogues and make those connections. So, so this is what I um, really champion. I'm going to go back here. Um, I believe I put this in the chat as well um, to the next slide. This is our AFRL SB Hub site. Um, so this is our small business website. I am under the impression that it's getting a complete revamp. Um, and so keep the address. Um, you know, hopefully if it, if it stays the same, great. If they not, it'll reroute you. Um, but to find out a little bit more about AFRL and the small business community here, this would be the site you'd want to take a look at. And I always like to direct people um, to connect with AFRL. You can hover over this and you'll see the drop downs pop up um, about a couple of our areas. But you can also click on 
connect with AFRL and it'll take you um, to information um, such as all the small business professionals that are within AFRL. Um, it is a little out of date, um, but I'm on there. I'm in the middle. Um, I'll show you that in a second here. Um, before I before I go to that, I wanted to do the drop down for LCMC. So a little bit about LCMC. So I shared with you, I'm AFRL, so the Air Force Research Lab. LCMC is our Life Cycle Management Center, also headquartered here at Wright-Patterson. Life Cycle Management Center is basically all of our um, platforms. And by platforms, I mean aircraft. So the goal here is to R&D over with AFRL and to get the capability transitioned onto an aircraft or, or whatever it is to support the warfighter. And so that's kind of how AFRL works with LCMC. So if you click on connect with LCMC, I can go ahead and do that. There is a um, connect with us. They have kind of like a group email box. You'll see that here over on the right um, to get contacted with LCMC. I'll go back to that connect with AFRL and I'll scroll down here just a little bit. I believe it's in the middle of the page. Um, there's a questions on the right, so you can do that group email box as well. And then if we keep scrolling here, there's a list of folks um, that you'll see. So um, on the left hand side this is like I said, it's a little outdated, but these folks are headquartered um, for um, AFRL, the headquarters. And then um, right here, we've got some of our uh, SBP, small business professionals at different locations. And as you'll see, I'm right here at the bottom. And the same with on the right, these are actually some program managers. Um, however, that information is, is just not up to date. So this, I see more coming on this. So I wanted to share that resource with you. I am going to go ahead then um, and pop back over and just double check and see what I've shared in the site with you. I'm sure you guys will see this. So how do you find out about us and what we're doing? So I did speak lately um, with headquarters and really they said sam.gov. And that's where we put everything that's available. Um, anything that we've got going on is gonna be through sam.gov. Um, take a look at it. This is where I also champion, use your Apex Accelerator. They can do a lot of the work for you. They can send you, you know, into your inbox, you know, open solicitations that match your capabilities, your, your NAICS codes, your keywords. SAM.gov, I, I, I've been working with it for over a decade and it's just a beast. Um, you know, I can know exactly what I'm looking for, name, office, and still struggle finding it myself. So, absolutely use that Apex Accelerator to help you navigate SAM.gov. Sometimes I, I need to call in a Hail Mary because I just can't find it. But um, so SAM.gov is where we put everything out there that we're buying. Um, there's a requirement to do so in, in the GPE. So it's going to be there. And then the second way um, headquarters shared with me really what I would say is go to our events. Um, I've got one of them pulled up here. It's highlighted. This is Lifecycle Industry Days. Whoops, whoops. I click it. This is actually LCMC's, um, so our Life Cycle Management Center, our, our, our big platforms, our aircraft. Um, this is their big industry event. As you can see, it just happened here a few months ago at the Dayton Convention Center. It was great, uh, great turnout, um, and it was a, a couple of days. And then um, the air, um, the, uh, oh, did I lose it? I might have lost it. Here we go. So W, so LCID for Life Cycle Management, WDI. Right dialogue. Here you go. Doing live skills here. WDI, right dialogue with industry, um, is the AFRL answer to that. And so last year we actually come this this previous year, this summer, we combined events into one full week. Um, so folks, you know, could travel and, and come together. This is a great way to come and hear speakers, speak to senior leaders, see booths, host your own booth. Um, it, it's a great event. Um, I believe on that last day, they, they even, um, you know, they have classified sessions and things like that that you can pre-register. But these are the events that we have going on here from Right Pat. Um, I'll be there. SBA was there. Um, you know, our Apex Accelerator was there and things like that. So um, we, we've got these events going on. Um, well, I might be thinking about the matchmaker, but um, you know, lots of big presence, and this is where you can come to figure out what you know, hear more about what AFRL is doing in a more intimate setting. Um, I also, when I'm talking about this, I'm going to go ahead and push this event as well. Um, this is coming up, and I don't believe I have this. Stay with me, guys. I'm going to throw it. Oh, I do have it. Perfect. This event is coming up. It's the Tri-State uh, Apex Accelerator Matchmaker. I've done this a couple of, of times and um, it's almost like a speed dating event from my experience. It, it was um, 
virtual and you know you've got about 12 minutes you speak to people um you know you can share the industry gets to share capabilities and then folks like me get to share hey how do you get connected so i wanted to throw this in there as well um it is ohio oh boy pennsylvania and new york are the tri-states and so um i believe afrl will be represented there and so this is a great event um th that you might consider taking a look at and see if it works for you Okay, going through my tabs here. How am I doing on time? Am I doing okay? <laughs> You're good. Um, I'm good. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll pull this back up. I shared with you, um, you know, SAM.gov is really how you're going to find our events, or excuse me, our open solicitations for our research and development side of the house. However, I would be remiss if I didn't throw in these IT resources. So I buy research and development, and I support those who buy IT as well. A couple of our um, uh, um, contract vehicles are mandated. Um, I've got one of them pulled up here. So DOD ESI is mandated uh, for the Air Force to use. Um, so, you know, if, if you're in the IT space, consider looking into, um, I, I'm going to use the word onboarding. I'm not, you know, they, they it all kind of varies, um, you know, how GSA does that and things like that. But if take a look at DOD ESI, um, see if that works. If you're in the IT space, um, you can see here there's quite a few um, agreements and things like that that they have going on. The second that's mandated, so it's our it's our first look for IAT, hardware and software, we're going to look over here at Tujit, and that link is in the chat as well. So Tujit, um, it's a bunch of BPAs, those are blanket purchase agreements. Um, and again, it, it, it'd be a way to look at, you know, um, do do I have the do I do I sell this type of software or hardware and and can I get on um, you know through GSA as as a vendor and things like that you can see I'm scrolling down here at the list of the vendors that are on there and you'll notice on the right here there are set aside options for that as well then our third look so you know if it's not mandated um, again if you're in the IT space we're gonna look to NASA soup. Uh, this is where we're going to go um, to look for for kind of the best value of the government and things like that. Again, it's hardware and software, and it would be a whole you know onboarding process that you would want to look through and and look at. Um, but but this is how we buy IT. So Sam.gov for our research and development partner with your Apex Accelerator to help you figure out you know, those solicitations that are really going to fit your capabilities if you're in that R&D space. IT, try to get onboarded onto some of these um, pre-established vehicles, DOD ESI, uh, Tujit, NASA Soup, um, to look for that. And then I believe that is it for what I have in terms of kind of important resources. I will go ahead and throw in the chat as well. I'm getting it pulled up right here. A couple of links if you want to take a look more so about how to get involved with AFRL. These go out and just different ways to follow us and what we do. If you're a social social media person, there it is. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And hey, Sarah. I think that'll do it for me. Yes, please. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, it's yes. Teresa Brown here at NSWC Crane. I just want to foot stomp that the NASA soup um, contracts are also used those are ESI contracts that are also used by all of DOD. Um, so oh. when getting on a NASA soup contract doesn't just um, you know, give you access to the Air Force, it gives you um, access to all of DOD because it is a preferred um, category managed contract that we're required to use as well whenever we possibly can. So just want to put a plug in for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. That That is very true. That is not um, Air Force specific. Um, so thank you for that call out as well. Yes, it, it, it opens up a whole, a whole new window and avenue for the DOD. So yes, thank you, Teresa. Awesome. Lots of great information. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. And of course, Wright Patterson Air Force Base is in our backyard down in Dayton. So please um, follow. She had several different um, links in the chat. You can pull those up on your website so that you don't lose those. And of course, you will be getting access to the uh, link to the recording. So. Um, I'm going to ask if our presenters can come back on screen. And I'm having some issues with my. And we'll go ahead and get started with the Q&A session.
in the moderated panel discussion. So lots of great information. Can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am, yes. I can hear yeah. you. All right, I'm just, I had a little bit of issues with my computer. All right, so Eunice, John, Ariel, Teresa, and Sarah. Um, great to hear such wonderful information about your agencies. And I, I wasn't aware that NASA Soup um, had the contracts and pretty much a lot of the agencies also use those. So um, we, again, also learn on these webinars. So very interesting, didn't know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up. We have several questions uh, for our panelists, but please go ahead. If you have, somebody said, wow, fantastic presentations. Yes, they deserve a hand, great resources. Um, and it's also wonderful to bring everybody in on one session. So you get a chance to hear everybody in one sitting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a couple questions. If you have questions, please go ahead, put them in the chat. Jill will be monitoring the chat and we'd love to um, get your questions answered because that's why you're here today. So you may have something specific, maybe in what you do, maybe it wasn't covered or maybe you wanna ask a specific agency or you wanna ask Crowley, so definitely put those in the chat. So I'm gonna kind of kick this off and there's no particular order in, in this. So whoever wants to chime in first and then um, we can kind of go from there. But if a small business, after those wonderful presentations, I'm sure they're like, oh, I wanna do business with Sarah. I wanna do business with Eunice, or I'm not quite there yet. And I may need to do some subcontracting. So I need to contact John. So if somebody's interested in doing business with your agency, when should they contact you? I know Ariel brought up those three Ps for success, being prepared. I'm sure after this, everybody's wanna, email you, they want to call you. Great presentation. I want to do business with you today. But if somebody's interested, when should they contact you? Shonda, I just wanted to chime in because all of the presentations were wonderful. They were. Um, but there's some common themes here, especially what Ariel said, be prepared. Um, know your business. I mean, know your business and the um, what your capabilities are and the capabilities of who you're the agency that you're marketing to. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I have to say is that the uh, for most of the agencies, the small business office is your gatekeeper. Um, they can come in and they have information available that you can um, kind of find out and get a feel for what um, the agency does. Um, just, and, and the main thing is, is, is I, ha I can't say it enough when I heard Ariel say that it's just be prepared. Um, don't just come and say, Hey, you know what? I want to do business with you, but you've done your, you've done your homework and you've looked to see what the agency does, especially with NASA, within NASA. What do we do? What have we done? You know that you've looked at the acquisition forecast and we have certain things that are on there that you're interested in. And then, then you can kind of present out as to what your what your business does. So it kind of uh, gives us an idea of what you do, and then we can ask actually um, figure out like if there's if there's uh, something that you are um, that is available for you, or if this is not the area that you need to be concentrating your um, time in because your time is valuable. Uh, most small business owners um, have, they're, they're working a business and trying to get, do outreach and trying to do everything multitasking. So just make sure that you're focusing on, on the correct um, uh, agency. Great, great response, Eunice. Uh, Teresa, did you wanna chime in? Sure, I was just gonna say, you know, I think one of the times is as we, um, the organizations put out requests for information or sources sought, mm -hmm. and you see those and you think you're interested, I um, always feel like it's a good thing for you to let the small business office that those organizations know that those are, um, you know, actions that you might be interested in. So yes, you're going to respond to those RFIs and sources sought, but 
those responses are going to go to the contracting folks. And at some organizations, small business may see them and they may not. So my recommendation to small businesses is always, hey, let the small business office know that you are responding to those because we are going to review um, that request and whether and make decisions about whether we think it should be set aside or not set aside. And any additional information that you might be able to give uh, to help us do that is great because you're gonna, on a lot of those, you're gonna have page limitations, but when you send information to the small businesses offices, you don't necessarily have those, those page limitations for us. So it's just, um, that is an additional time. I think it's great to reach out uh, to the small business offices and let them know what you're specifically, you may be responding to, over. Awesome. Teresa, so I just wanted to tell you, oh, I'm, bad. I'm sorry. No. You, you are so close. I mean, I just thought about when you said that, that's the only way that we're able to set aside in small business or in that social economic category. If you see something on there and you can only do part of the work, respond, please respond because within the procurement office, sometimes they can decide how they're going to actually uh, uh, do the uh, go out with the procurement. Can we do a partial small business set aside? Um, do you know and and also so it's so it's so important. I cannot emphasize that enough to respond to those sources sought because if you don't, we don't know that you're out there, and so we cannot set aside within the uh, for small businesses. So I agree with you, Teresa. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Great, um, Teresa, and I just want to put a plug in again because we recognize not everybody may be familiar with RFI's request for information or sources sought. We actually did a webinar a couple months ago about notice types. So on SAM.gov, if an agency is looking um, to put out a contract, they're looking for a small business to provide services or provide goods, they may put out a request for information. Hey, is there a small business out there that can do X, Y, Z? Or they'll do a source of salt. It's the beginning stages of their marketing before they put a contract out on the street. And that's on SAM.gov. You can work with your Apex accelerators looking for those, how to find them, and then also how to respond. Um, I don't want to take um, anybody else's thunder, but Sarah, did you have anything? Ariel, John, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Sarah? Sure, Shonda. Yeah, I'll, I'll share too. SAM.gov, and I'm not quite sure what the function is, but it also has a spot where you can say, I'm interested in this um, in terms of, of a solicitation that's out there. I know you mentioned about, you know, hey, subcontracting. So that's a really great way to see, um, you know, who else is it so well so it's a business decision some folks like to let folks know they're interested in a solicitation and some folks like to keep that close hold um but you know if you're interested in a subcontracting opportunity on a specific effort that maybe you can't do all of it using that um, you know i'm interested in being a partner on this or, or whatever that function says in sam.gov and again your apex accelerator can help you with that um, but there is a spot to put that out there um and you know work that angle as well to hopefully get get in uh, in on someone's proposal as a subcontractor for the effort as well. So look for that out, Sam. Over. Awesome. John or Ariel? Yeah, I'll add to that. So even as a large business, um, we use SAM.gov. Um, you know, it's where our business development team is in it daily. I can tell you that. Um, and um, and so if, if you are searching and you are registered on SAM.gov and you want to approach um, Crowley with an opportunity or any large business for that, for, you know, there are always opportunities to partner. Um, you know, as I said, you know, when, so the question that was posed is, is, is when should they contact our office or uh -huh. our folks? Um, well, you, you can contact us anytime um, because we are always, we always have a pipeline of business that is, is there. And, um, and if you have a pipeline of business and you think that, our company or you know other companies, there are tools to say who on, on these uh, government sites, there are tools to say who has what contract and what you can do to, how you can contact them for specific contracts. So um, there is a plethora of information out there. Um, you know, just have some patience because sometimes it does not, it, you know, these contracts take time. Um, and one bit of advice is that, you know, you, you are, you, you should, 
you know, it does take time to solution and make sure you're the right fit to, to provide the right proposal for these contracts. Over. Yeah, great point, John. Um, with some of these, if you do see something that you're interested in, and of course, there's a source to solve or request for information, respond. It's a great way to market. But to John's point, reach out ahead of time before a solicitation even comes out, you're interested in, in becoming a subcontractor to Crowley, or you're interested in doing business with Right Pat or HHS or Crane or NASA, reach out before something even comes out so that the small business office, so that these representatives know who you are, send them your capability statement, like your one page marketing, um, um, marketing information for your company so that they know who you are. Ariel, hey, did you have- Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm going to get Ariel and then instead of, I know we have questions, I think we're going to go to the chat next, Jill, because I see some wonderful questions. Yeah, okay. So, All right. Yeah, going to do yeah, that I next. Think, yeah, I think Ariel. the only thing from the HHS side, um, we are definitely um, increasing our oversight and accountability to our large business crimes and increasing opportunities for um, small businesses. So what we've done, um, actually we're piloting as a part of the small business customer experience that I mentioned um, during our presentation is that we're um, creating a subcontractor bid board. So if there okay. are large primes and maybe even other small businesses that are looking to team with other small businesses to procure, to go and pursue a potential opportunity at HHS, they're able to put that information out. Um, and then, you know, individuals or companies that are within our small business customer experience can see it and then, you know, make the connection to determine if it would be a good partnership to pursue um, as far as a subcontractor type relationship or a teaming or joint venture type of thing. So just wanted to add that is one thing that we are piloting um, in 24 um, at the at HHS. Okay, great. Um, yes, we will be providing the slides. Jill, I, I scroll back through the comments at one of these questions. Um, I can pose this one and have you, looks like a, jo a Roger Griffin. Yeah, that's where I saw that it started. It's like okay. 1119, yep. Yeah. So, okay. Do you want me to read them or you want? You can go ahead. Okay, so uh, it, there's a lot of industry specific questions coming through. So uh, Roger Griffith would like to know um, uh, if you use small business uh, welding or repair work is one question. We also have a question from Cami Reed about- uh, Well, let's- Well, it just there, there, okay. We can start with welding, but then we also have- uh, a question about a trucking company uh, awesome. that sounds pretty appropriate for this presentation today, John. So, uh, so a lot of industry specific questions. Is but we'll start with Roger and Cami. If I can go first, um, so I I, I do I already am having dialogue with Cami. So Cami, thank you for okay, me. very good. So, so okay. this is beneficial for everybody, right? Um, Cami, it's not waiting. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I I love uh, that entrepreneurial spirit, right? Um, but uh, uh, to answer Roger's question, um, you'd be really surprised at the tools that are out there. Like everyone keeps saying, Sam.gov, and you can go down into a specific you know, know your NAICS codes, right? So I, I don't know the NAICS code for what, what welding would be, but you can go in and search what federal or local or state um, opportunities there are um, for your niche. So if, if welding is your, um, is your company, then, then research those NAICS codes, research those opportunities, and you'll be shocked to see there is an opportunity for everybody, every company out there on, on, on SAM.gov. Um, and I, I, we use other tools that link to SAM.gov that are um, kind of paid websites, but it brings a lot of that stuff together. And, uh, you know, but, um, uh, but it, at the end of the day, SAM.gov is the is the um, you know the the standard for what the government agencies use. So I would say start searching through there. Use your use your um, your resources that you have here on this panel and on this team that can help you narrow down to find the the um, the correct opportunities for your niche. Over. Yeah, and for somebody that may be wondering, a NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System, identifies your specific industry. So your product or your service, it's one of the major um, 
coding systems that the federal government uses to identify who you are and what you do as far as your industry. All right. Um, Jeffrey Taylor had the question about uh, what is uh, the food procurement process? What agency purchases medical and food supplies is perfect for Ariel being oh, yeah. HHS, but uh, a part of uh, the discovery of what agencies buy what you sell is to meet with an apex accelerator and do yeah. some market research ahead of time. Uh, because it's great that we have the experienced panelists that we have today. Uh, but the the preliminary questions of what agencies buy what you sell, it's researching sam.gov. Um, it's meeting with an apex accelerator. Uh, but so I will also let the panel uh, talk about this as well. Okay, so I can go ahead and start. So as far as the food procurement process, I'm not 100% sure I am the subject matter expert to be able to answer that. I know within HHS, um, we do have facilities that have their own kind of cafeterias and kind of catering services. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, what exactly, I'm assuming that it follows the regular procurement process um, in order to uh, obtain those services for those um, sites, the, for those sites. Um, as far as medical supplies, HHS does um, purchase medical supplies. Um, one of the things that we um, have been pushing um, due to the Made in America um, policy is that the medical supplies have to be um, made in America. Um, so, you know, we are not, we're not able to procure medical supplies that may have been um, sourced overseas. Um, so if you have questions about what particular Optive, um, you know, is focused on purchasing medical supplies, I can put my email in the chat and we can have a follow-up conversation. All right. Thank you. Hey, Jill, I wanted to follow up with that, too, yes, is that please. most agencies, well, I'll just speak specifically talk about NASA. Virtually, our center is, is small compared to some of the other centers. So we actually purchase everything. I always say from from toilet paper to rockets, I always say that. So we have, um, so the contractors, number one, what Jill said is to research and see what the, where you want to focus your, um, your energy into uh, pursuing. And then most of our um, food supply is are supplied by contractors. So that's how you find out how to get in touch with the contractor if you want to supply food and the same thing with med medical services and supplies. Our, uh, we have contractors that supply that uh, service. And so it would be um, great if you could pursue the contractor that actually um, is cognizant over that particular requirement. So it's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> well, and Eunice, while you're on, we have a NASA question really uh, from Devin Marty. Marty. Uh, we're a design build company. Uh, we've done a lot of work with NASA and visitor centers. And uh, Devin has questions about uh, projects with NASA. Um, so um, I would say the best way to find out about it is to get in contact with me, but you asked that at a very great time because um, the, um, our, um, I was about to use the acronym. <laughs> I was about to say a and &E. was... <laughs> Our architecture and, and engineering service uh, contracts are coming up soon. Um, they are on a schedule. So we um, do a multiple award uh, type procurement for those services. So stay in, um, stay in touch, look at sam.gov again. And, um, I'll put my information in the chat as well. Um, and get in touch with me and we can talk about the um, services that are, are provided. This, this um, that particular service will be provided as a regional, regional wide uh, contract. So um, I'll, I'll give you more information on that. And actually another question for you. Uh, Sandra Estock would like to know about the NASA Mentor Protege Program. Uh, she sees a list of approved mentors uh, what's your recommendation to start this process? Okay, so my recommendation is to um, to make sure to do your research on the companies that are on that schedule to see what they actually do and see if their capabilities fit into the capabilities of your company. And then I would reach out to the, the names that are on there are the small business 
liaison officers. So each of those large companies have their own small business office and get in touch with them and um, make see if you can get an appointment with them. The large businesses do the same thing the agencies do. They actually start looking at uh, wh where they're going to actually um, uh, uh, send their, I mean, do their uh, business development, who they're going to bid with, and things like that. So they start building their teams early as well. So you'll be able to find out more information from the business. And then also, if you, um, I'm going to put my information in the chat, and um, I would like to send you the information for the program manager over our mentor protege program, and he could give you more information if you're interested um, in uh, in pursuing a mentor-protege relationship. Awesome. All right, thank you. We have a shout out to John for the help uh, with the firm, uh, with Roger looking for welding repair work. So thank you. Uh, uh, John Zurich would like to know uh, his company is an onshore offshore software factory. Mm. Are offshore IT services a disqualifying factor in most federal contracts? Would anyone like to take that one? Mm. My understanding, if it's full offshore IT, uh, then it's not, the workers are not located in the United States. Um, so that might be a disqualifier. Uh, I work with firms that have uh, American staff mm -hmm. uh, do the federal work and they might have offshore uh, staff in other countries that perform other than federal work. Uh, but I don't know if any of the panelists have anything they wanna add to that. Yeah, and that may be something that may be- uh, Yeah, I think uh, you do have to be located in the United States. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I know a lot of, if there's if it's employees that are oh, foreign nationals, a lot of the contracts and don't allow for foreign nationals to be included on the contract. So um, I guess when you're saying onshore, offshore, I'm assuming that the the software that you are producing is was manufactured outside of the U.S. I'm going to assume that's the mm -hmm. case. I guess they will. That's have what to I'm verify, thinking. Would have yeah. to verify that or not, um, John? You can put it in the chat. Yeah, you can provide us with some clarification. Thank you. And that may be something a PCR may be able to give a SBA procurement center representative be able to give you more definitive answer on something like that. Okay, and it looks like Eunice, you put your information in the chat. Thank you very much. Uh, a shout out from Sandra to you, Eunice, for the information you provided. I did miss somebody. Hang on. Uh, Jeffrey Taylor, uh, what benefits are there for disabled veteran uh, procurement within agencies? So I can, on the part of SBA, kind of answered a little bit about that. There's a service disabled veteran owned cert certification that you could obtain because 3% uh, of all federal contracts are set aside for service disabled veteran owned small businesses. Uh, and the Procurement process is the same uh, for all small businesses, I would say, in terms of looking in SAM.gov and getting a, a, a registration, meeting with an Apex Accelerator. Uh, but you, if you are a service disabled veteran, uh, you are eligible to apply for the SBA Vet Cert. So as of January 2023, SBA took over the certification process for service disabled veteran owned. And uh, there is a portal I can put in the chat that gives you the information on how to apply for that. Uh, so put it, I'll put it in the chat. Or Shonda yeah. Harris can put it in the chat. Thank you. So you don't have to. And then also I want to add uh, that we are having, I'm the veteran rep for our district. Mm -hmm. On the 15th, we're having a veteran resource symposium uh, we are partnering with ODOT, the Ohio Department of Transportation. So at the ODOT um, auditorium off of 70, uh, off of Broad Street, we're having a um, uh, symposium, I think from 10 to 3. So if you want to come to that, I can 
put the information also in the chat for that. Um, and then also, if you are a veteran, we have a training tomorrow, a Boots to Business training from 9 to 4.30 at ECDI. So I can put that information also in the chat. The and link that's for in that. Columbus on that's Old Columbus. Avenue. Yeah, for both of them those events. Hey, Bill, can I also say too that um, when he's asking a really a lot of a general questions, so uh, I mean, so you have to actually let us know what your what your what your capabilities are when you're actually want to present out to agencies because we do have goals, especially in the uh, small disadvantage, better known small business area. So, and then all, the, another thing within the social economic category, if you're looking at that, we all, I always talk about uh, be a frenemy. <laughs> so you also, I know you know people that are in your area that, that are in your industry um, that you compete with. But in order, like we said before, the only way we can set aside is if we have enough people. At least we have at least two qualified, capable companies to that respond to our sources sought. So it's really important for you to let us know that you're there um, and that you can, um, you're able to do the work. So it's very, uh, so I just wanted to do a, a shout out for our, our procurement offices so that we'll know that you're there and we can actually set aside in the STVOSB um, socioeconomic category. All right, thank you. Uh, Vitali would like to know, um, he has a CONUS laser group in Plain City, which is near uh, Columbus, a uh, manufacturing company since 2012. Uh, they're getting their last steps for NIST assessment and SPRS, I'm not sure what that is, uh, score within the next few months. Uh, can anyone point us in the right direction to do subcontracting in Ohio? Um, I can just give a, for subcontracting uh, with prime contractors like SBA and Apex, we do a lot of uh, business to business networking events or business to government networking events. Sometimes that can be a way, uh, well, it is a way to meet uh, potential teaming partners. Uh, uh, and we do have a holiday party next month. Uh, well, it's a get together, a holiday networking event on uh, December 14th. Uh, for Ohio-based businesses. Well, Indiana, if you want to make the trip over, it's for everybody. But uh, I would say uh, uh, business to business or industry days, those are great ways to uh, find prime contractors uh, for subcontracting opportunities, panelists. Any of you want to jump in on that as well? Okay, I'm going to try not to keep on talking so much, but... <laughs> Got, I, I cannot emphasize how much the industry days are helpful. Um, I just found out about, make, so you, you make connections with um, other small businesses and find out more. And the unique thing about being at those industry days or outreach events is that you're not going to see the same people at each of these outreach events. So if you, if your time allows to take advantage of being at the industry day, um, when we when we uh, do our industry days, more than likely, like you never will see. It's very seldom that you'll see all of the small businesses. I'm sorry, small business specialists in one place at one time, and so it kind of cuts down on your footwork as far as making connections with folks. Um, I do know that we've had companies that have actually um, uh, found teaming partners. Um, at these events from talking to people and, and finding out, doing a deep dive after they meet and find out um, more information about it. So I really cannot emphasize too much that, that those uh, outreach events, industry days, uh, meet and greets, all of those are just really hugely important. Eunice, where can they find out about industry days? Uh, I know it... Well, we don't have industry days like we used to. We do have the outreach events. So if you look on the website right now, um, we're not doing any in-person events. You'll see them on the, um, that'll come up on the website for NASA. And then um, when you're on those, when you're on those calls, you can actually communicate with the folks that are on that, on those calls 
with the presenters and things like that. So um, hopefully we'll be able to do some in-person events in 2024. Um, but right now, um, uh, we'll, right now our outreach events are virtual. And there's a, is, do you ever post, I know a lot of agencies um, have the ability to post on sam.gov. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I, I forgot to say. <laughs> I'm, so, yes, okay. I'm so sorry. I forgot to say. So I was thinking of, um, of OSB, uh, Office of Small Business Programs in particular, but we do have host procurement specific industry days. So it depends on when the, when the, of the, the uh, industry day is um, hosted and it's hosted based on the procurement. So you do have to follow on the system for award management, whatever the requirement is that you're interested in. And we will have all of the information there, your registration um, informa uh, information. Uh, just at Glenn Research Center, we're hosting our industry days in person for the most part. Um, they, the, the, um, our center director is really encouraging us uh, to uh, do more face-to-face -face type um, uh, engagement with small businesses. So if you're looking for a procurement specific uh, uh, industry day, then we do host those. So I apologize. I should let you know that too. Yeah, that, that's your, that's perfect. Uh, and, and I know Sarah, you were talking about the um, Air Force industry days. And then uh, also uh, once one key thing I keep hearing with from all the panelists is SAM.gov, SAM.gov. You all have to be registered in SAM if you want to do business with the government. And it's not just a registration portal. It's a way for you to find opportunities based on your NAICS codes. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of filters in there. And I would say the experts on assisting you in navigating SAM.gov, because like Sarah said, it is a beast. We are barely able ourselves to stay on top of it. Uh, even if we've been with government for years, uh, it's your apex accelerators. Uh, they work on SAM.gov all the time with firms and uh, they can help teach you about the various filters within it and how to search for industry days, how to search for, uh, search for uh, like Teresa was saying, the source of SOT notifications. Um, they're all like it, all of these things, are, you know, it's not intuitive. Government is not. It takes a while to learn how to do it. And uh, uh, I just try and tell all firms, give yourself some grace as you're getting uh, to know how to do all of this in a little bit of time. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stop because I talk too much. Okay. Hey, Chris, yes, Vernon. Yes. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for participating and all our panelists. Maybe you remind um, everyone who you are. All right, let me turn my camera on. Okay. Yes. I won't push buttons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I am ready. Can y'all can everyone see me? No. Not yet. What about now? No. no. Okay. I'm just that pushing button, y'all. So I'm just I'm letting y'all know that now. Um. Uh, That's Sean, okay. Could you, Sean, no, can you turn my camera on for me, please? I can't. I can't. I wish I could. No, not uh, uh, Sharon. Sharon, uh, Sharon, Sharon. to turn her camera off. So until she can turn it back on for me, um, I yeah. just want to let everyone know that working with Crane down south of us. They have a program and they have another portal called Seaport. And mm. Seaport is one of the major events and major, major contract vehicle that is used to help small business to get into do business with Crane. And mm. every two or three years, they have a Seaport portal, which only open, like I said, every two to three years. So mm -hmm. that would be the opportunity for everyone who's interested in doing business with Crane down in Odom, Indiana, to sign up to get registered in the Seaport portal. Is um, it C I, like S-E-A or C hyphen port? Uh, can you put that in the chat? 
Well, I had reached out to Teresa. She did put that information out oh, in the it's in there in the chat box already. Yes. Okay. Um, this is a good opportunity for anyone who want to do business with Crane to get your name on that list because they do have opportunities um, that's out there for small business owners. And once you get on that list, you will know everything what's going on with them and all the opportunity that's available to apply for it. Now, the big catch about that, when it's over the threshold of 4.5 million, their office have to come to Indiana to get the okay to um, put it out there on SAMS. So remember, as all the presenters, panelists are saying, pay attention to SAMS, SAMS back up, and make sure you're that you register in SAMS. And Vernice says the business opportunity specialist, uh, my colleague in Indiana. So thank you. Uh, Teresa, I don't see the uh, Seaport link in the chat. It's, Maybe it's it's there. It, it's in there. Right? It's down. Oh, it's bottom. down further. Okay, that's why. Yeah, at right. 1148. Well, I, didn't, I didn't put the Seaport link. Um, oh, there's Vernice. The okay. Yeah, I didn't put the Seaport link because the way Seaport works is those are multiple award contracts. So you actually um, have to submit a proposal when they post the rolling admissions to SAM.gov. And once you submit a proposal, it'll be evaluated by Dahlgren. And if you are awarded um, a multiple award contract by Dahlgren, then you get access to the CPO. What is a Dahlgren? Dahlgren is NSWC Crane or NSWC Dahlgren. That's another warfare center in Virginia. Oh, um, okay. Thank you. So, yeah. Okay. So that that um, that seaport contract is a centrally managed nav C contract. And I just love that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I speak Air Force, not not fluently. That's why we have Sarah on here. I, I'm I'm about a thirty percent fluent speaker, but I I speak about one percent Navy. So. Uh, I, I'm very glad to have you on today because I, I feel like, you know, it, just being located in Columbus, my world can be kind of small and consumed by the agencies that are in Ohio. So I had no idea, like Shonda, I was like, I'm, I'm mind blown with all the stuff that Crane buys. But but yeah. that's another great reason why to engage the small business offices, because there's a, a new language. There's always acronyms that you have to learn, but the small business um, professionals that we have today can help you navigate and also introduce you to the language and some of those. All right, we've got like six minutes. Uh, uh, ODOT symposium information. Did you talk about that, Shonda? Okay. Yes, but for everybody, I sent it to them directly, but it okay. is we are highlighting the resources that are available to veterans um, on that November 15th event. The registration link is in the chat. You don't have to be a veteran. You can attend. We're going to have no, there's a lot of ODOT and symposium questions. Look, there's William Turner. How you doing? Um, uh, we his, will have a uh, lot of speakers, so anybody can attend. Uh, SDVOSB verification expires in January. What's the recertification time? I'm not sure. Uh, Do we with that? When did you get your? And you can come off. When did you get your certification? He said, he, uh, it doesn't say he's going to have to well, put that in there. It just says that it expires. Okay, I'm going to pass by. You you may need to um, do it right away, William. Um, are you coming up on your, I think, is it, was it three years? Do you know when yeah, did they you? they changed it from, uh, it was CVE through the VA and right. uh, gave an extension for one year. So that made it three years when it went to the SBA. And I haven't done the recertification through the SBA yet. So that's why I was kind of okay. curious. You will have to do it come January. So you will want to, you should start on that. Okay. Um, and if you have questions, you can touch base with me. It's great to see you. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. So, yeah, good to yeah, see you. Yeah, you will need to, come January, you will need to have that. So I would start working on that now. Um, and I think Apex are still uh resources to help but if you have questions you can let me know okay thanks you're welcome all right uh leon turn leon i'm sorry leon anderson 
Uh, he's just given us kudos that it's been a great event. His yeah. company operates a high performance optimization program for special warfare tactical air control party in the National wow. Guard. That sounds like a Teresa. If I had an idea about maintaining muscle mass in space, oh, maybe it's a NASA question. Should I search in SAM or is there a specific department in NASA? Uh, okay, so it's a muscle mass question. I, the, yeah, that's that's above my pay grade. I know about the 8A program. Uh, so. so if he's looking for specific, so number one, it depends on the size of his business because one of the uh, things that we were talking, I was talking about the uh, small business, I said small business innovation, innovative research program and the, the small business technical transfer uh, resource program is those are the ones where you're looking for, if you're talking about muscle mass, we do some uh, physical science research at Glenn Research Center, but the main center is with Johnson Space Center. So I would make sure to um, see if you can get in touch. There's three small business specialists at that center. And so make sure to reach out to one of the three and they can give you more information. You can always get in touch with me, it's no, no problem. And I can see if there is uh, a, um, if there's information out there where, they, if, where you can actually um, uh, send, who you can send your information to. And um, Leon, I would say this is um, Sharon Hopkins with the Apex um, Accelerator at Ohio University. I would also um, ask you to reach out. Um, I'm not sure where you're located. Are, do you have an Apex Accelerator that you work with? Um, if you do, you might reach out to them. Um, are you, you know, are you in Ohio? Um, if so, definitely reach out to them. Um, the Ohio um, Apex Accelerators um, have um, a special program that they're working with the Air Force on, and um, you might even um, want to talk to them about that special program. Um, and if you want to drop me an email, um, I can um, talk to you about that offline a little more um, that we're doing with the, it's, um, the Air Force and it's the um, innovation um, with the Small Business Innovation Program that we're working, doing some special little things with that. So um, if you're in Ohio, we can give you some extra help with that as well. And Sharon, this is Sarah. I'll jump on that as well. I didn't want to steal from NASA, but, you know, certainly this sounds like it's in the Air Force wheelhouse as well. So, uh, you know, Mr. Anderson, if, if you're interested in working with the Air Force, you know, I, I shared our, our Tech Connect uh, where you can share that idea and, you know, see if that's anything we're working on. Um, I know it was mentioned about Cyber Sitter programs. I'm going to throw a link in here for AFWorks. Um, I'm not sure we touched on AFWorks. Uh, I, I meant to um, if we didn't, but um, here, here at AFRL, you know, AFWorks is running um, our Cyber Sitter program, and, and there's different, uh, I'm, I'm going to call them pillars within it. There's the AF Ventures arm, then there's the Open Topic arm, where, uh, you know, every, every couple of months they send out um, a solicitation, and for the Open Topics, it's it's open. Um, and then the um, third pillar of that, there are, uh, I believe they call them special topics now, but really it's defense-based topics. So it's kind of tied directly to one of the technology directorates um, within AFRL. Um, so I encourage you and, and everyone, you know, to take a look at AFWorks. Um, you know, Cyber Sitter program is an SBA run program. Um, it's specific dollars um, set aside for these programs. The, the, the Cyber side is for small businesses and that Sitter side has a um, educational piece to it as well. There's a partnership for ed with um, like a university and things like that. So I threw the afworks.com. Um, take a look at them. Uh, they also have some ask me anythings every Thursday uh, where you can ask questions and, and um, you know, kind of figure out if, if this is worth your time um, pursuing. It's a great way to, to break into the federal uh, procurement uh, space, um, you know, it, it's it's a sometimes those, those phase ones are a smaller dollar value, and you kind of figure out how how it works. And uh, you know, there's a phase two, and then there's a phase three, uh, you know, to transition to commercialization. So AFWorks.com, and then uh, Mr. Anderson, I'll, I'll send you as well um, that innovate. Um, 
share an idea for um, our Tech Connect portal, if, if you would, you know, keeping that muscle mass in space would definitely be something, you know, say our human performance wing um, would would be working um, as well. So again, I encourage you to take a look at our airforcetechconnect.org site, that shared idea light bulb function, get your idea in there, get some feedback um, from program managers, um, you know, are, are you headed in the same direction as the Air Force is, uh, you know, and things like that. So. Um, just throw that in there to, to reiterate um, kind of another avenue as well. If, if, if you want to come look at the Air Force. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Very, thank you very much. I'm in Cleveland, Columbus, and also North Carolina. So oh. I will be in contact. I appreciate oh. it. That's very wonderful. Good. Okay, so you need to come and visit me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're in just Cleveland, you're in the neighborhood. <laughs> Leon, <Right. did> you, <laughs> Leon, did you attend our holiday networking event last December? I certainly did. You're you're an eight A firm. Yes, I am. Oh, is he? Okay. Because you did awesome. something different with uh, um, something with athletic. Yeah. Yes. We we treat the tactical athletes of the uh, of the air support operations squadron, 118th in um squadron down in North Carolina, at yeah. the Air National Guard Special Forces, and we make sure that they maintain their fantastic uh, uh rehabilitation. Then when they go off to the um do their missions. We make sure that we, that we rehab them. Yeah, I remember. That's some important work. Remember your face. Yeah. Uh, Jill, somebody, I know we're getting to the end. Somebody had mentioned, and I think somebody was answering, but somebody wanted to know about medical procurements. And then I also- saw that, yeah, Nicole Grimes. Yep, and she, Nicole, thank you, Nicole. Mm -hmm. I think she was responding to Jeffrey, but also DLA, troop support, would also have some opportunities for some medical supplies and maybe some sustenance. I don't know, Sharon, does DLA still do the, um, what was the trainings that they do every couple of months? TKO. The TKOs, the training, knowledge, and opportunities. So DLA, Defense Logistics Agency here, we have a division here, but um, the TKOs may be a great way for you to learn about medical and sustenance opportunities with, I believe, the Philadelphia branch. Right. Um, yeah, did you want to talk, Sharon? No, no, I, I'm agreeing with Shonda. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's again, uh, Paul Parker uh, wants information on state contracts. Uh, it really is Apex. Um, yeah, I reached out to my Apex person. They weren't familiar. Most Apex counselors are are familiar with state contracts. Um, we did a series at the beginning of the year with several state agencies. So um, I can put in the chat, uh, what is his name? Uh, someone that you can follow up with to get information on doing business with the state agencies. Um, James Yagovich. Y Yagovich, yeah. Yeah, let me get his information and I'll put James Yagovich. They usually do a lot of trainings as well. And, and a plug. So as you were, while you're waiting for this, uh, the recording to finalize, you can go on the Apex website, Sharon, if you can plug the link there and you can get those. We did several trainings with the state, how to do business with the state, and how to utilize their, just the general website and looking for um, opportunities. And then we had specific agencies. So all of that is recorded on the APEX site. And um, you can go out there and, and look at that. Um, and I'm getting ready to post his email, his information in the chat. And we're down to the last, we're at 12.05. So we should, we should probably end it here pretty soon. Um, Josh Ewing would like to know about, uh, they, he does leadership training, executive coaching, augmented reality for inventory. We also do government reselling, finding items that an agency needs. It is the most, yes, uh, finding items that an agency needs has been very difficult. Uh, any recommendations for finding information for the general needs? It's back to, and, and I don't know any panelists, you want to address that, like finding general needs opportunities? 
One of the things I would probably say is another thing on SAM.gov is there is a lot of reporting. So all federal agencies have to do what we do call a contract action report. And that contract action report is submitted to Congress, but the data, a lot of the data from that contract action report is available um, to folks that are registered in SAM.gov where you can actually pull down and see what the government is buying from those reports. So, you know, that, that if you're wanting to be a reseller, uh, those are some area, that's an area where you may be able to go do some data mining if you have people in your companies that are good at that is that F, it's called FPDSNG data, the Federal Procurement Data system. system. Data, data system. system. There we go. Um, next generation. And um, you can get a ton of information from there on what the government buys that's public information. The reports are just, you know, canned reports uh, that you, you can pull information from. Uh, the one thing I will say about reselling, uh, especially if you're selling to the DOD and probably NASA, is um, if you're if you're looking to resell electronics, you definitely need to be very very careful uh, about uh, counterfeit electronics because there are all kinds of regulations and requirements as it relates to reselling of electronics and making sure that you are an authorized dealer and not uh, selling counterfeit parts to the government to be used in weapon systems. Um, Etc. So, just some, you know, some things to definitely think about if you're trying to get into that world. Over. And uh, Teresa, I just wanted to reiterate with that you have to be very careful with um, all, all the items, and then also um, using those items to sell to contractors as well, because the contractors have flow down flow down clauses in their contracts that allow them that do not allow them to use. Um, especially the um, parts from um, any contractor from China. Um, so I, I just have to reiterate that. So just want to say right quick to, you really have to do your homework depending on where you're gonna go because when you say reselling is very broad. So you have to kind of see where you're gonna focus your energy. And if you're gonna focus on NASA, then focus on NASA Land Research Center and what we buy and then go from there. So that's just, just a suggestion. All right, very good. I think uh, we will, um, it, it's uh, 12.09. I know that people are having to hop off uh, for the sake of time. So uh, I can close us out, Shonda, unless you'd like to do that. Um, I don't think you need to arrange that. Do you wanna close off? Uh, just mention, you can. Well, what do you want to mention? <laughs> you can tell Jill and I, we love working together. <laughs> we know one another. Um, this is our last webinar for the calendar year. We just started our new fiscal year uh, at the government in October, but the last one for this calendar year, this is it. And then we're going to do Again, Leon, we're gonna do our holiday networking event. Uh, William, it's been a while since you've been to one. You've oh, been to them in the past, numbers. but William, I'm calling- We haven't you. seen you for a while, have we? We haven't seen you for a while. So <laughs> for those that are in Columbus, even Sarah, you can make the drive up if you want to. It's a great, just organic networking. We have our resource partners. Uh, Eunice, I know it's a long drive, but we, we, we wish every single professional that was on today could drive down. If you're joining us from any other part of Ohio, if you want to make the drive, we'll be at the State Library December 14th from, I think, from like 1 to 4.30. Um, we typically have food and then we just network small businesses and then government personnel, um, contracting officers, uh, banking individuals, resources, and just a great way to network. Leon came last year. William has been to those so I don't think we have the link yet, Sandra. Uh, no, we don't uh, have. We will check. get that to you like within the next couple of weeks. For we uh, get the flyers <laughs> developed and and uh, sent out as fast as we can. Uh, but sometimes 
Uh, we have other things that come up and then the flyer gets out later than we'd like. Uh, so uh, again, thank you everybody for taking the time today. Uh, I hope to uh, see all of you again in another panel and uh, uh, have a good rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa, Ariel, <laughs> Eunice, Sarah, John. Yeah, all oh. of you. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, all of our presenters. Thank you, right, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.